Okay, this is section 6.6, .6, graphs of transformed sine and cosine functions. Now you can also do this to the other four trig functions, but we mainly do the transformations, translations with sine and cosine. So graphs of the form y equal a times the sine of bx plus c plus d, and y equal a cosine of bx plus c plus d. Okay, yeah. We're going to figure out the effects of all of these. Now this was actually done in the college algebra section of the pre calculus course back in section 2.5. So we're going to look at the graphs of the form y equal capital A times the sine of capital BX plus capital C plus D and y equal capital A times the cosine of capital BX plus capital C plus D. Now of course you can graph these using your graphing calculator but sometimes you're asked questions about what are the effects of these capital letters on the basic sine and cosine curves. So we need to figure that kind of stuff out. So from section 2.5, we should recognize these as translations and transformations of the basic sine and cosine curves. That's really what they are. So with sine and cosine, the effects of A, B, and C have their own special names. For whatever reason, D does not have a special name other than it's a vertical translation up or down. So we need to keep in mind that the basic period of both sine and cosine is the interval, the closed interval from 0 to 2 pi. The above two functions are also periodic. Uh, it's almost impossible to destroy the periodicity of the trig functions. Now, remember, tangent and cotangent had periods zero, uh, had periods pi. All the other trig functions had periods two pi. So we will sketch the basic period. That is, we'll find out what happens to the closed interval zero to two pi, and then fill up the rest, the rest of the graph by translating left and right the length of the period. Okay? Remember, zero to two pi. Those are the x values. Okay, those are the x values. The important x values that we keep track of. Number one, where the basic period begins. This begins at x equals zero. Remember, for sine and cosine, we started them at x equals zero for the closed interval zero to two pi. So for the sine function, it began on the, the x-axis, so it began at zero, zero. For the cosine, it began off of the x-axis, so that was the point zero, one. Now, of course, the capital A and capital D can affect the y value. Okay, where the basic period ends? It ends at x equals 2 pi. Remember, the basic period was the closed interval from 0 to 2 pi. So for the sine, this was the point 2 pi comma 0, and for the cosine, it was the point 2 pi comma 1. Where's the midpoint of the basic period? Okay, remember the basic period, the midpoint was cut 0 to 2 pi in half. That's at pi, x equal pi. So for the sine curve, point pi comma zero, and for the cosine, it's the point pi comma negative one. So remember, for the sine curve, it was another x-intercept. For the cosine curve, it was the lowest point, where the first quarter point of the basic period is. So that's at x equals pi over two. So we're cutting zero to pi in half, so that's pi over two. Now remember, for the sine curve, that was the point pi over two comma one, so it was a, a maximum. And for the cosine curve, it was the point pi over 2 comma 0. It was an x-intercept. Where the third quarter point of the basic period is. So that basically means cutting in half pi to 2 pi. So that would be at 3 pi over 2, at x equals 3 pi over 2. Remember, for the sine curve, that was the minimum. That was the lowest point, 3 pi over 2 comma negative 1. And for the cosine curve, that was another x-intercept. So 3 pi over 2 comma 0. Okay, part A of all this stuff, the constant capital D, even the y equals sine cosine of bx plus c plus d. So remember, the d was outside the parentheses. So the constant d is a ripple shift of d units. Again, thinking back to section 2.5. If d is greater than 0, then the translation is up. If d is less than 0, then the translation is down, just as it was in section 2.5. So we also need to keep in mind that this translation also translates the x-axis. Well, that's kind of important in terms of the intercepts. So the period does not change, and the location of the basic period does not change. So the capital D constant does not affect period. For a simple vertical translation, we usually do not track the five important points. Okay, I mean, you can if you want to, but we usually don't. So some examples. 
In part A, we're going to sketch the basic period of each of the following. In part B, fill up the entire graph by extending the basic period, which is kind of the standard way we graph these. Again, we're kind of assuming you're not graphing these on your calculator. So the first one, y equals sine of x minus 2. Notice a is 1, b is 1, c is 0, and d is equal to negative 2. So we're translating down 2 units. So the basic period is still the closed interval from 0 to 2 pi. Remember, these are x values. The graph is this. So remember, originally it would have looked like that. So we moved it down 2 units. Now to swap the rest of it, kind of we pick this up and move it. Pick it up and move it. Now, if you didn't have the x and y axes, you would say this looks like the regular sine curve. Yeah. It even looks like the regular cosine curve. Yeah. If you didn't know where the axes were, it looks the same. Number two, y equals the cosine of x plus 1. So a is 1, b is 1, c is 0, and d is 1. Notice our d is plus 1, so we're going up. One unit. So the basic period is still 0 to 2 pi. Remember, the cosine began at 0, 1. So remember, since you're going up one unit, it'll go up to 0, 2. Okay, so 0, 2. And then this was originally an x-intercept. So remember, it was originally here at pi over 2, 0. Go up one unit. This was originally at a valley, pi negative 1. Go up two units. Oh, one unit, I'm sorry. And originally this was an x intercept. Go up one unit. And again, 2 pi was originally 2 pi 1. Go up one unit. And then just extend this out left and right. Okay, part B. The constant A. Okay, from section 2.5, recognize this as the vertical stretching or shrinking, because we're multiplying the function by a number. So if a is negative, it's also a reflection through the x-axis, kind of like turn the sine and cosine curve upside down. Recall that both sine and cosine satisfy negative 1, is less equal to the sine of x or the cosine of x, which is plus or equal to 1. So now, remember, we're multiplying by a. So if we multiply by the absolute value of a, We'd have the negative absolute value of a is less than equal to the absolute value of a sine of x, or absolute value of a times cosine of x, which is less than equal to absolute value of positive a. It's kind of like the sine and cosine curve were originally stuck on the, in terms of the y-axis between minus 1 and 1. They're now stuck between minus absolute value of a and, and absolute value of a. The absolute value of a is the greatest distance between the sine of x or the cosine of x and the translated x-axis. For that reason, we have this definition. The absolute value of a is called the amplitude for either of the functions y equal a sine of bx plus c plus b and y equal a cosine of bx plus c plus b. This amplitude is, for those of you that can remember or ever heard of AM radio, that's what the a stood for. So warning, it is the absolute value of a that is amplitude, not a. Remember, a is not, the amplitude is not negative. Some notes on this. Number one, the amplitude is always greater than or equal to zero. Amplitude does not affect the location of the basic period. It only affects the maxima and minima. It's kind of like it stretches the curve out vertically. And remember from section 2.5, if A is positive, it is called a stretch. If A is negative, is less, if A was greater than one, it was called a stretch. <clears throat> if the absolute value of A is between zero and one, it was called a shrink. And if it, then if A itself is negative, it's also called a reflection. So for each of the following, again, we're going to sketch in part A the basic period, in part B the entire graph by extending the basic period. Again, let me go back here. Having this number A in front of a function, remember what that really did going back again to section 2.5. You multiply all the Y values by A. So here's our first one y equals 3 times the sine of x. This would be called a vertical stretching by a factor of 3. So we'd multiply all the y values by 3. 
So remember, anything that was 1 is now going to be up at 3 on the y axis in terms of the y measurement. And on the negative side, negative 1 will go down to negative 3. Of course, the x intercepts stay the same, because 0 times 3 is still 0. So the basic period is in 0 to 2 pi. The idea is to draw the regular sine curve and then stretch it. So here's the regular sine curve. You need to get used to seeing the sine and cosine curve, which if you draw enough of them, you'll get used to seeing them. Remember, we're multiplying everything by, excuse me, we're multiplying the y values by 3. So here the y value is 0. 0 times 3 is still 0. At pi over 2, the y value is 1. We'll find that by 3, it gets moved up to here. This is a x-intercept, so with the y value of 0, 0 times 3 is still 0. Hit 3 pi over 2, the y value is negative 1. We'll point it by 3, it's going to go way down here to negative 3. And we'll end up back at 2 pi, 0, because 0 times 3 is still 0. So it's kind of like our curve does something like that. So there's the effect of multiplying each y-coordinate by 3. Think of y-coordinates. In terms of those graphs and translations in general, numbers outside of parentheses typically affect y values. Numbers that are inside parentheses with the x, they affect the x values. So we're going to kind of plot those points and then draw a curve. So there's our stretched out basic period of the sign. Now again, to get the rest of it, just pick this up and move it. So this would patch up here and go way up like that. And then that's all we can see. And on this side, if we continue on, it's going to go like this. Okay. So it should look as though you stretched out the sign curve. Number two y equals negative 3 cosine of x. So this is a vertical stretching by a factor of 3, and it's also a reflection. So it's going to be the cosine curve turned upside down and stretched. So again, the, the period is not affected. It's still 0 to 2 pi. Remember, this negative 3 says multiply all the y values by negative 3. So right here is the basic period of the regular cosine curve. Starts here at 0, 1, and then at pi over 2, 0, pi negative 1, 3 pi over 2, 0, 2 pi 1. So remember, we're going to multiply all these good y values by negative 3. So this would become 0, negative 3. This would still be pi over 2, 0. This would be pi positive 1. Okay, I probably got that on the next slide. Yeah, there we go. So again, I multiplied each one of those y values by negative 3. And then it didn't affect the x-intercepts because 0 times anything is still here. And then there's our basic period. Okay, it should look kind of like this guy turned upside down and stretched out. Now to keep drawing it, this would go like that, and then that's the end of it. And then this would go like that, and keep on doing it. So there's the graph of y equals negative 3 plus sine of x. Now sometimes when you're told to do this, you're asked to, quote, fill up the, the page or fill up the plane. Part C, the constant B. Remember, we had y equals A, sine or cosine of Bx plus C, and then D. So B is the number in front of the x. It's inside the parentheses with x. It's going to affect the period. So the constant B is in parentheses with x. That means it gives a horizontal stretching or shrinking. It's kind of like a spring. Stretching and shrinking horizontally changes the period of the periodic function. If you stretch it, the period becomes greater than 2 pi. If you shrink it, the period becomes less than 2 pi. So recall that stretching, shrinking, and translating horizontally was backwards. Remember, with the a in front of the function, we multiply by a. With the b in front of the x, we divide by b. 
So if capital B is greater than 1, that's that's value capital B is greater than 1, then the period will be shortened by a factor of absolute value of B. If 0 is less than the absolute value of B, which is less than 1, then the period will be lengthened by a factor of B. And that's how we say it. Even though we say in a factor, it's really 1 over absolute value of B. Uh, typically, we don't like B to be negative. We can get rid of that by factoring out, and then we need some identities to help us with what happens to that minus sign that you factor out with sign and cosine. Does it go away or what? So if B is less than 0, then the graph is also reflected through the Y axis. The effect of capital B on the period. Now remember, sine and cosine had period 2 pi. Tangent and cotangent had period pi, and secant and cosecant had period 2 pi. So recall that sine and cosine both have periods of pi. Okay, now remember, from the transformation in section 2.5, you divide the x values by b. So the period of y equal a times sine of bx plus c plus b, and y equal a cosine of bx plus c plus b, the period is 2 pi over capital B. 2 pi, I should say the absolute value. We don't like I think it's purely being negative. Um, it's kind of unfortunate, but capital T is sometimes the notation used for period. So sometimes you'll see capital T equals 2 pi over absolute value of B. Oh, and I didn't mention it back then, but amplitude is also called A, capital A, which is unfortunate because, you know, that's A. So if C equals 0, then the basic period still begins at X equals 0. But the basic period will end at X equals 2 pi over B. Again, I'm assuming now that B is positive. So I'm kind of losing my absolute value. Here. I do notice if B is negative, it's kind of like the basic period is to the left of the y-axis. If B does not equal 0, then the midpoint and quarter points are also affected. Again, if B is 0, if you think very carefully, you just have y equals a number. Because if B is 0, there's no x. So all you have is a horizontal line. So for each of the following, we're going to graph the basic period, the entire graph, by extending the basic period. This sometimes gets kind of difficult to draw by hand, especially if the period is really, really large or really, really small. Now sometimes if capital B involves pi, you get rid of the pi nonsense in terms of periods and even on the markings on the x-axis. So our first one, y equals cosine of 2x. So A is 1, capital B is 2, C is 0, capital D is 0. So this is a horizontal shrink by a factor of 2 of the regular cosine curve. So it's kind of like we're compressing it. That's what the shrinking does. So the period is 2 pi over 2, which is just pi. So this completes that regular funny looking thing of cosine between 0 and pi. So we're going to divide the x coordinates of the five important points by 2. Because again, this 2 is with x. Now remember, if it's with x, you do the backwards of what you're looking at. So dividing the x values by 2. 0, 1 still goes to 0, 1. Pi over 2, comma 0 goes to pi over 4, comma 0. So half of pi over 2 is pi over 4. Pi negative 1 goes to pi over 2, negative 1. 3 pi over 2, comma 0 goes to 3 pi over 4, comma 0. And 2 pi 1 goes to pi 1. So notice, this completed its complete period between x equals 0 and x equals 5. So this is the original cosine. Our red is y equal cosine of 2x. Notice it's kind of like we took this guy and just started pushing it this way. So this is halfway between 0 and pi over 2. This is halfway between pi over 2 and pi. So this, this midpoint used to correspond to this guy. And then how do we get the rest of it? We just keep filling it up. Okay, so we're going to move this guy here, and then we'll keep going like that. Now, some people will say that with that y equals cosine of 2x, in the original period of 0 to 2 pi, that 2 says you will have two periods. So look at it like that. You'll have two periods. Okay, number 2, y equals negative 3 sine of negative 2x. Uh huh, this is kind of interesting. We're affecting x and we're affecting the y values. So this is a 
vertical stretch by a factor of 3, the horizontal stretch by a factor of 2, its reflection through the x-axis, its reflection through the y-axis. So with this one, we're going to take those five points, divide the y values by negative 3, divide the we're going to multiply the y values by negative 3, divide the x values by negative 2. Okay. So multiply y by negative 3, divide x by negive 2. Remember the number in front of the x, you do the opposite of what you're seeing. You're seeing multiplication, so do division. With the y values, you do exactly as what you see. So 0, 0. Still stays at 0, 0. Remember what reason we're doing 0, 0? Because I have a sign. If it was cosine, we'd do 0, 1. So pi over 2, comma 1, goes to negative pi over 4, comma negative 3. Again, divide x by negative 2, multiply y by negative 3. So pi 0 goes to negative pi over 2, 0. Okay, again, divide x by negative 2, multiply y by negative 3. So 3 pi over 2, negative 1, goes to negative 3 pi over 4, 3. Divide x by negative 2, multiply y by negative 3. So 2 pi 0 goes to negative pi 0. So these will be the special points for the transformed graph. So there is the original sign. And here is what happened when we multiply y's by negative 3 and divided x's by negative 2. So there's the basic period from negative pi to 0. And now to get the rest of it, just extend it in either direction. Again, being able to extend something is probably more of an artistic skill than a math skill. So it's one of the few times that those of you who are artistically inclined might be pretty good at math. Okay, number three, y equals the sine of x over 2. Notice this is the same thing as sine of 1 half x. So our b is 1 half. So this is a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. So notice the b is 1 half. We're going to multiply x values by 2. The y values, because there's nothing in front of it, and there's no plus d, the y values stay the same. So again, we're going to multiply our x values by 2, because again, the b is 1 half. Remember, the numbers that multiply by x do the other operation. If you see division, multiply. If you see multiplication, divide. So 0, 0 still stays at 0, 0. Okay, pi over 2, comma 1, then multiply by 2, pi comma 1. Pi comma 0 goes to 2 pi 0. 3 pi over 2 will go to 3 pi negative 1. And this guy goes to 4 pi 0. Remember, multiply x values by 2 because the b is 1 half. There is the original sine curve. Here is the stretched out sine curve. Notice on the right side of the y-axis, I've already filled up the x-axis. So on this side, okay, sometimes when the, again, the period gets to be too big, it becomes a little more difficult to draw, but this should then go something like, oops, I'm missing it, something like that. Again, if we didn't have the axes, you would say, I think that's still the original sign curve. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It really is difficult to completely obliterate sine and cosine. Okay, the constant C. Remember, that is in parentheses with the X. Remember, it was A times sine or cosine of dx plus C. So the constant C affects the horizontal translation of the graph. B and C together affect where the basic period begins. Notice it's B and C together. So of course, it's easiest if B is 1. So of course, this will also affect the other four important points. So definition. The phase shift of the sine curve or cosine curve is the x value where the basic period begins. Okay, that's the phase shift. It actually just tells you how far do you move it left or right. 
The phase shift for either one of these curves, y equals a sine of bx plus c plus d, or y equals a sine of bx plus c plus d, is given by this. The phase shift is negative c over b. Okay, it's negative c over b. Now, you will see some books, instead of saying bx plus c, they will say bx minus c, in which case the phase shift is just c over b. I think students understand it easier this way because they're used to seeing addition and everything's addition. Now, the Greek letter phi is the notation for phase shift. Some books have started using p, little p, for phase shift. I guess the easiest way is just to say phase shift. For each of the following, we're going to find in part A, amplitude, part B, period, part C, phase shift. Simplify your answers. Do not use mixed numbers and decimals in your answer. So we're going to find amplitude, period, phase shift. Remember, amplitude was the absolute value of A, period was 2 pi over absolute value of B, phase shift is negative C over B. So here's our first one. F of x is equal to negative 4 times cosine of 6x minus 3 plus 2. The amplitude, remember, is absolute value of A. So absolute value of negative 4, which is 4. Please don't leave it like absolute value of negative 4. Do you, the man? Period. 2 pi over absolute value of B. So 2 pi over 6. That simplifies to pi over 3. Notice what that means. The cosine will have completed its entire period from 0 to pi over 3. Well, I'm saying 0, but it may, it's not going to start at 0 because i got a C there. The phase shift. It's negative C over B. Okay, our C is negative 3. So negative, negative 3 over 6, which is 1 half. So notice, if I were to draw this, it would start at x equals 1 half. That's what that means. It starts at x equals 1 half. And it's going to end at x equals 1 half plus pi over 3. Notice, that's just this goofy number. 1 half plus pi over 3. Number 2, y is equal to 3 fourths times the sine of x minus pi plus 2. Now, if you want to write down what the letters are, a is 3 fourths, b is 1, c is negative pi, d is 2. So amplitude is absolute value of a, absolute value of 3 fourths, which is 3 fourths. Period, 2 pi over absolute value of b, 2 pi over absolute value of 1, it's 2 pi, okay? Period isn't effective. Part C, phase shift. It's negative C over B. So negative, negative pi over 1, which is just pi. So this, this starts at x equals pi. It ends at x equals pi plus 2 pi, so it ends at x equals 3 pi. You know, if we were going to draw it. But again, if you're going to draw it, uh, for the life of me, I don't know why you wouldn't just feed this to your calculator. Unless, of course, your professor or your teacher says, you're not allowed to use your vacuum calculator. Which, I don't know if I fully agree with that. It's kind of like, I want you to build a house, but that won't use any power tools. Number three, y equals three cosine of two-thirds x minus two pi. So our a is three, our b is two-thirds, our c is negative two pi, our d is zero. So amplitude, absolute value of A, absolute value of 3, which is 3. B, the period, it's 2 pi over 2 thirds. Now, if you remember how to divide by fractions, because remember, that's what that means, 2 pi divided by 2 thirds, you're going to have 2 pi times 3 halves. The 2's cancel, it's 3 pi. The phase shift, negative C over B, so negative, negative 2 pi over 2 thirds. So again, you're going to have 2 pi times 3 halves. What is that, 3 pi? So notice, by the way, there's nothing weird about those two being equal. I mean, really, it may seem weird, but there's nothing weird. It begins at x equals 3 pi. It ends at x equals 3 pi plus 3 pi. It ends at x equals 6 pi. Okay, some examples. Which of the following? We're going to graph the basic period. Part B, the complete graph. Now, again, if you were on your own, you were allowed, I mean, I'll just go ahead and use my calculator. So here's our first one. y equals 2 times the sine of 2x plus pi. So our a is 2, our b is 2, 
our c is pi, our d is 0. So we're going to find what happens to the five important points. So first we move left pi, pi units. Why left? Because c is equal to pi. Now remember, you're seeing plus because it's associated with x. You do the opposite. You're seeing plus, so plus normally meant right. So do the opposite. Move left. So 0, 0 will go to negative pi comma 0. Pi over 2, 1, again, subtracting pi. So pi over 2 minus pi, that's the negative pi over 2. Remember, the y's are not affected. Pi comma 0 goes to 0, 0. Remember, subtract pi from x. Okay, That's what left means. We're going to affect the x coordinate. Left is subtract pi from x. Okay, 3 pi over 2 goes to pi over 2 comma negative 1. And 2 pi comma 0 goes to pi 0. So all of these x values were found from the original by subtracting pi from x. So remember, the plus pi, if it's, and it's, in, it's in parentheses with x, do the opposite of what you see. And notice thing, we're following what my dear Aunt Sally says. We're starting from the inside parentheses and working our way out. Okay, the 2. Now remember, it's with x. You're seeing multiplication. Divide these new x values, the new ones here, divide them by 2. So negative pi over 2 comma 0, this becomes negative pi over 4 comma 1, this becomes a mistake here, don't I? Isn't 0 divided by 2 still 0? So this should be 0, 0. Okay. That's the that's typo. That should be 0, 0. Pi over 2 comma negative 1 becomes pi over 4 comma negative 1, and pi comma 0 becomes pi over 2. Zero. So again, fix this, fix this one. This is still 0, 0, because we're dividing the x values by 2. Because I'm saying times 2, remember for x to the opposite. Now I'm coming outside parentheses. Multiply the y values by 2. So these x values stay the same. So again, that should be 0. Multiply these y values by 2. So it should have negative pi over 2, comma 0. Negative pi over 4, comma 2, 0, 0. Pi over 4, comma, negative 2 and pi over 2 comma 0. Again, those two pi over 2's should be 0. And again, if you think about it, what's halfway between negative pi over 4 and positive pi over 4? 0. So those pi over 2's should be 0. So again, there's the original sine curve. There's our basic period of our function. And then just keep drawing it like that. Just keep doing it. And you're saying, wow, it looks like somebody really squeezed together the uh, sound curve and made it taller. Here's our second one. Y equals negative 3, cosine of x minus pi over 2. So our a is negative 3. Our b is 1. Our c is negative pi over 2, and our d is 0. So why do I have something with d equals 0? In the real world, that's what happens. So first, starting inside parentheses, we're seeing subtraction. It's with the x. We're going to add pi over 2 to the x. Now, in case you're wondering, why is it with the x? Why is it the opposite of what you're looking at? It's kind of like set what's in parentheses equal to 0. You have x minus pi over 2 equals 0. Notice, to solve for x, you would add pi over 2. And then if there were a number in front of the x, we would then say divide by that number. That's why it's backward to the x. Whatever's in parentheses, imagine setting equal to 0. So again, we're adding pi over 2 to each one of those special x values. So 0, 1 becomes pi over 2, 1. Pi over 2, comma 0 becomes pi 0. Pi, comma negative 1 becomes 3 pi over 2, negative 1. 3 pi over 2, comma 0 becomes 2 pi 0. And 2 pi, comma 1 becomes 5 pi over 2, 1. Okay? Now again, b is 1, so I'm, I'm done with x's. I'm done with the x's. This minus 3 now says to multiply each y value by negative 3. So these new y values, multiply them by negative 3. And hopefully you can see that I've made no errors. So these become the special points for y equals negative 3 cosine of x minus pi. Notice the period is still 2 pi. 
So here again in light gray is original cosine. Here is the basic period of y equals negative 3 cosine of x minus pi to t. And then just keep on doing that. Just keep on doing that. Come on. Yeah, yeah. And again, without the axes there to give you some notion of scale, you're probably saying this graph looks a lot like the previous one. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, I told you in the AM radio that the A was the amplitude. If you're wanting an FM radio, what's the F? F is the frequency, and frequency is one over period. So notice, that's how close together these hills and valleys are. So other periodic functions from sine and cosine. We now look at functions of the form y equals a1 trig 1, b1 x plus c1 plus or minus a2 trig 2, b2 x plus. So we're adding two trig functions, where trig 1 and trig 2 can be either sine or cosine. So it can be the same. This is sometimes what's called superposition. You're putting one sine or cosine curve on top of another sine or cosine curve and trying to figure out the net result. Now again, you know, if you were really pressed and saying, why can't I just give this to my calculator? I don't know. I don't know why you can't. You actually can. Unless someone's telling you, no, 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 you're not allowed. So consider the graph of y equals 2 sine 2x minus 3 cosine 3x. Again, on the next slide. Nothing special about these numbers. You know, the fact that you know the design the equal to I'm not nothing special about it. Just wanted something to make it. Okay, so notice how weird it looks. I was saying it's so weird it's bothering my eyes. Now clearly to draw this, I just gave it to a piece of software. You don't think I really said any fine points here. Now if you look at it. It does appear to be periodic, though, doesn't it? It's kind of like you've had to figure out where is the basic period of this thing. Uh, if, you're, if you think about starting at x equals 0, it's kind of like, uh, then it starts to repeat here. So it does look like the basic period is still 2 pi, more or less. And notice, it's not exactly on the y-axis. It's kind of like it moved left a little bit. So it appears to be periodic. But in fact, it is. We find the period of each separate trig function. Which one? We know how to do that. For the sine part, the period is 2 pi over 2. Remember, the sines had the 2s, the cosines had the 3s. So that's pi. For the cosine part, remember, it's going to be 3 pi over 3. Let's see, the 2 pi. Let get the 3 pi. Sine and cosine both start with the period 2 pi. So 2 pi over 3, which is only 2 pi over 3. So the lowest common multiple of these two periods Kind of like ignore the pi's for the moment. So it's kind of like a one and a two thirds. So the LCM of these two periods is two pi. It's kind of like the lowest, again, ignore the pi's for the moment. The lowest comma multiple of one and two thirds. So you say, well, can it just be a little bit more or less? So, and that is the period of y equals 2 sine of 2x minus 3 cosine of 3x. So again, you find the period of each separate trig function and get the lowest common multiple for those. And again, if the pi, pi's bother you, just for the moment, kind of get rid of it. And you're looking for the lowest common multiple of 1 and 2 thirds. Notice, uh, if you do 1 times 2 thirds, that's 2 thirds. 2 times 2 thirds is 4 thirds, which mm, 2 times 1 is 2. But 3 times 2 thirds is 2, and 2 times 1 is 2. So fact, the sum or difference of two different periodic functions is also a periodic function. Furthermore, the period of the sum or difference of two different periodic functions is the lowest common multiple of the periods of the two original functions. By a common multiple, we mean an integer multiple of the periods. In case you're wondering, well, why didn't we just multiply one by two thirds? So we're talking integer multiples. So, you know, one times two, one times three. 
So there's some examples. Find the period of each of the following. Simplify your answers. Do not use next number of decimals in your answer. So here's our first one. f of x equals sine of 3x minus cosine of x over 2. Okay, so there's numbers in front of the x. That's cosine of 1 half x. So the period of each one of these two is changed. For the sine, it's going to be 2 pi over 3. For the cosine, remember, we're looking at 1 half. Multiply instead of divide. So for the cosine, it's going to be 2 pi over 2. Well, here are my integer multiples of uh, 2 pi over 3. So this is 1 times it, 2 times it, 3 times it, 4 times it, 5 times it, 6 times it, and so on. So integer multiples of pi, 2 pi over 3. And now again, for the cosine part, I've got 2 pi over 1 half, which is 4 pi. Again, remember the 1 half, so if we take our shortcut, do the opposite of division, multiply. Hey, okay, the integer multiples of 4 pi. Well, if, I, if you're really careful and observant, don't I already have the common multiple, the lowest common multiple? 4 pi. So the LCM of 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi is 4 pi. That's pretty good. So what's the period of this guy? 4 pi. Notice that's big. Again, it is sometimes helpful to go ahead and just list out the integer multiples of this thing. We'll multiply by 1, 2, 3, 4. We should say natural numbers. We're, not, we're never going to multiply by 8. Okay? Number 2. Like with the sine of 2x over 5 plus the sine of x over 3. So for this one, the b is 2 fifths. For this one, the b is 1 third. So for the first one, the sine is 2, the period is 2 pi over 2 fifths. It's going to have 2 pi times 5 halves, which is 5 pi. That's a big period. For the second sine function, it's going to be 2 pi over 1 third, which is 2 pi times 3, 6 pi. Okay, now again, ignore the pi's for the moment. The lowest common multiple for 5 and 6, notice 5 is prime. So the lowest common multiple of 5 and 6 is 5 times 6. So now put back the pi. The lowest common multiple is 30 pi. Again, if the pi's bother you, just look at the, the number part. The lowest common multiple of 5 and 6 is in fact 30. Notice this is one of the few times you're looking for lowest common multiples, but you're not adding or subtracting fractions. So the period of this guy is 30 pi. Wow, incredibly big. Notice if we were to just to draw this the way we normally draw something, we would we would not even be able to draw the basic period. Remember, 30 pi, what is that? Close to 100? Number three, y equals cosine of 3x plus the sine of 9x. So the first b is 3, the second b is 9. So for the cosine part, Period, 2 pi over 3. That, that's it, 2 pi over 3. For the uh, second one, the sine function, it's 2 pi over 9. Okay. We're looking for the lowest common multiple, again we should say integer multiple, of 2 thirds and 2 ninths. So multiples of 2 pi over 3. There's 1 times 2 pi over 3, 2 times 2 pi over 3, 3 times it, 4 times it, 5, um, yeah, 5 times it, 6 times it, and so on. And let's do the multiples of 2 pi over 9. So we got 2 pi over 9, 4 pi over 9, 2 pi, oh my gosh, 2 pi over 3. Wow. So the LCM of 2 pi over 3 and 2 pi over 9 is, in fact, 2 pi over 3. So our period is 2 pi over 3. And then making this list, you will find it, even though the list might be rather long. Because there's an example too, the LCM being 30 pi. Um, we would have to list it up to 6 times the first one and 5 times the second one. Which, uh, how many do I have here? 1, 2, 3. Four, five, six, seven, eight. I would have listed it. Number three, part three here. Damped and undamped oscillations. Okay. Damped and undamped oscillations. The sine and cosine curve, that up and down motion, that's an oscillation. 
So we now look at graphs of the form y equal f of x times the sine of x and y equal f of x times the cosine of x, where f of x is any function besides another trig function. Notice it's something times the sine, something times the cosine. So you're saying, do I just then multiply corresponding y values? Yeah. So typically, f of x is an exponential function or a non-constant polynomial function. Now, we want to show you kind of a quick and dirty way to do this. Again, without just giving it to your graphing calculator. Because sometimes, you know, like, what if the graphing calculator dies or you forgot to bring it with you? So, envelopes. Or if you prefer, envelopes. Definition. For functions of the form, y equal f of x times sine of x and y equal f of x times cosine of x, the functions f of x and the negative of f of x are called the envelopes. The function f of x is called the upper envelope, and the function negative f of x is called the lower envelope. The idea is that the envelopes will envelop the sine or cosine function. That's where it's coming from. So this is not like, you know, you're trying to mail a letter. So it's not like we're trying to envelop something. Examples. We're going to find the upper and lower envelopes for each of the following. So number one, y equals x squared sine of x. So my f of x is x squared. So the upper envelope is y equal x squared. The lower envelope is y equal the negative of x squared. Now remember, this y equals negative of x squared says first square the x and then multiply by negative 1. So right side up parabola, upside down parabola. Number two, y equals 3 to the negative x times the cosine of x. So my f of x is y equals 3 to the negative x. Okay. Basically, remember, the f of x is the thing that's not a trig function. So my upper envelope is y equals 3 to the negative x. The, upper, the lower envelope is y equals negative of 3 to the negative x. Again, this one says first find 3 to the negative x and multiply it by negative 1. Now, graphically, sometimes the upper envelope is below the lower envelope, which can be confusing. Part B, graphing y equal f of x sine of x and y equal f of x cosine of x. So we're going to see how do we use the envelopes to help us graph. The method for graphing y equal f of x sine of x and y equal f of x cosine of x. Step one. Graph the upper and longer, upper, excuse me, graph the upper and lower envelopes as dotted graphs or very light graphs. They're not part of the graph, they're there to help. Step two, as best you can, draw the sine curve or so cosine curve, whichever is appropriate, between the envelopes. So whenever the sine curve or cosine curve would normally be one or negative one, the curve that you are drawing should touch one of the envelopes. Now again, this is kind of an artistic skill. Now notice, the x-intercepts of the f of x function means that you have forced the sine or cosine curve, whatever it is, to touch or cross the x-axis. And of course, the x-intercepts of the sine or cosine are still going to be the x-intercepts of the original function here. Because, you know, zero times anything is zero. Warning! These functions are not periodic. Okay, they're not. They're kind of, it's kind of like someone ruined my periodic function by making it larger or smaller. So, some examples. Sketch the graph of each of the following. Be sure to include the envelopes. Now, sometimes you get a really, really good calculator, and that's what it does. It draws the envelopes. So here's our first one. Y equal x over 2 times sine of x. Notice my function f of x is x over 2. So my envelopes are y equal x over 2 and y equal negative x over 2. These are lines. These are lines that pass through the origin, slope 1 half, slope negative 1 half. So there they are in light gray. Okay. Now, my trig function is sine. Now, as best you can, draw the sine curve between these two gray lines. Now, remember, the sine curve starts at 0, 0. At pi over 2, I'm supposed to have 1. So it's going to go up and kind of touch that. Then at pi, it's an x-intercept. 
At 3 pi over 2, it's supposed to come down here and touch that guy. At 2 pi, back up to 0. And the similar thing goes on on this side. Okay? So remember, the sine curve comes down here. We get negative pi over 2. X-intercept. Envelope. X-intercept. So again, as best we can, we can try to draw the sine curve. I've made it, the sine curve a lot thicker, so because it, you know, it looks like it's kind of touching it. Technically, it's tangent to it. Hmm. Does it look kind of like, or is it just me? Does it kind of look like a mustache? Number two, y equals three negative cosine. Excuse me. Y equals three to the negative x times the cosine. My upper envelope is y equals 3 to the negative x. My lower one is y equals negative 3 to the negative x. So y equals 3 to the negative x is going to look kind of like this. And then negative 3 to the negative x looks like this. And if you use your imagination, and this is, we'll see how good your imagination is, it should look kind of like you have a trumpet. And I got the cosine. The cosine starts here. Now at Pi over 2, I've got an x intercept. And then it gets squeezed together really good in those two values. Now, notice on this side, again, i got x intercept. And then it's supposed to come way down here. It's supposed to touch this guy at, negative, at x equals negative pi. So now sketch the cosine curve between the two angles. Remember, at negative pi, the cosine was negative 1. So that means I'm supposed to come down here and touch the lower envelope. So I'm off the graph. So then you'll see it going way down here, and then all of a sudden it comes back up. Okay. So there, some some place way down there is where it finally touches. Notice as, as I go to the right, it almost looks like a straight line. The two envelopes have squeezed the cosine curve together. And notice it would have done the same thing to the sine curve. So end of section 6.6. .6.